Hey y'all. I am like freaking out right now. I've got the Spring Festival in Hillsboro, North Carolina on Saturday and I am still trying to get everything organized. I'm going to make a video here on making jewelry and I have got so much stuff. <laughs> this is just part of it right here that I made months ago. I just wanted to show you some of them have earrings and rings and bracelets. Here's some bookmarks. And so like this is one of my trays. And I picked this up. Oops. Which is a storage. It's more organized for like 24 things. But like I made this bracelet that does not go in here. But it goes with this set. You know so but the, oh, there's some there's cute stuff and I actually have two necklaces stuck in this one area um, I'll show you here in a minute but like this is a turtle a turtle necklace and this matching ring goes with that so oh I am just like so stressed out and then I got this cute little metal stand and I thought I can even put like a set of jewelry here you know if I have to I don't know and hang them down like if put the earrings on the edges of the the display so anyway that may just be where I'm, all my bracelets go. I don't have that many bracelets, I don't think. But I wanted to show you what they look like when they're completed. And I know lots and lots of you are making jewelry. So I've got to get organized here. Let me zoom out a little bit for you. Now that is zoomed all the way out here. I tried to bring it in closer than I typically do because it's going to be smaller work. Here is a stack of skins I have, and I've got more I need to go get. And then I've got my box full of, these are like necklace trays. There's some chains. So you have, there's some glass pieces. Here's more necklaces and chains and more glass pieces. Here's rings. I've got one bracelet left, so thank goodness I don't have to make a bunch of bracelets. I've got a bag here of bookmarks, which are antique brass, which are really, really kind of adorable. I'll show you more up close, but I think these came from China. I'm not sure. I, I order stuff either from Etsy or from Lily D's. Lily D's is the one I typically get stuff from. But I don't know if you can see that, but it's a little bookmark, and it's going to have the skin put in there and the glass over it. It's going to be so cute. And then these are the other bookmarks that I make. They kind of have like a little, um, like a crown at the top of it. And then that, they have the little wedge that slides over your paper for your bookmark, and then your glass and acrylic skins go here. So I'm going to be making, basically, lots of bookmarks. I've got two anchor, uh, these are keychains. They came with the little thing that hooks to all your keys. So I've got these to make. Uh, those are keychains. Like I said, I only have one brass um, bracelet. I do have that brass. I don't know if I have the glass for that. And here's another one. These are cheaper ones I got, I think, from the craft store, but I don't, I'm not going to use those. They look too cheap. So I'm looking and I don't have any other brass chains for necklaces and I don't have any brass trays so it's going to be silver. Today I'm going to be working on silver. 
I've got a whole bag of glass here that I ordered like a bulk bag of glass. So, oh, here's some, and here's some earrings. They're silver and very little of the silver shows, so they go with either, they go with the antique silver or the, or the flat out sterling silver. So they work well for both of those. So those are what I have. So I've got to go through and organize and get my skins all pulled out and get my skin pulled out. Ha! <laughs> Play on words there. Um, I use Lily Glaze, which comes from Lily D's. I love this stuff. I do have a bottle of Diamond Glaze, which everybody raves about, but I have never used it before, but I've got that for backup. I got alcohol, which is great for cleaning glass and things like that, getting glue off. So I've got quite a bit of stuff here. So let me get organized and I will be back with you shortly. So I'm getting ready to go through all my skins, but I wanted to quickly show you what I have. I was going through all my stuff and you have to make sure that you have the tray and the glass and then if it's a necklace you have to have the chain and so I had to rule out well like this piece here I don't have a chain to match it but I've got chains on other necklaces already made so if I sell this I'll just take a chain off of another one I might get a chance to get by the craft store and pick up another one but I'm going to go ahead and make them so I've got a ring a pendant and a bracelet that are all in that antique brass. I have 10 bookmarks from Lily D's that are ready and they have glasses, the cabochons, and then these came from another company and here's the 10 pieces of glass. They have them all wrapped individually which is very nice. And those are smaller pieces of glass. I can tell by the size. So you have to really pay attention when you're ordering jewelry making kits. If they don't come as a kit with everything, then you need to make sure you get the right size. They come in millimeters or something like that. So I have all these set aside that have the glass pieces in them. I've got 16 necklaces or pendants for necklaces. So I have to make sure that I have at least 16 chains, so I'll do that before I get into all this. These three came from a different company, or I may have gotten them at the craft store. The silver is a different color, so I'm making sure that that goes with these three. And then also on these, one is sterling silver, one is antique silver. So the chains look very similar, but if you look really up close, one is not antiqued and one is. So I've got to make sure I have match matching chains for the pendants. And then I've got uh, eight or ten rings. I had a, a bunch of earring sets, but I only had two pieces of glass. To go so I can only make one earring set because I only had the two glass cabochons so I can't use the rest of those today. So you have to think ahead and plan ahead. Here's two keychain holders that are in the anchor style. Also the difference in a necklace if you notice that the hook goes this way and then this one goes this way and so one direction will not allow your chain to slide through freely when it's hanging on your neck and one will turn it sideways so in that case you have to have the little metal rings that go to turn it sideways for you and if you buy a set they include this with it if you don't buy a set you may not get them and you may have to buy these at the craft store too so I wanted to make a note of that. So I've got everything pretty much lined up. I'm going to count my chains to make sure I have enough to go with my pendants. And then I'm going to go through my skins and figure out what skins I want to you know, place with what. 
Uh, and a lot of times too, like this skin here has metallic gold in it, which is really pretty. So that lends itself with the brass very beautifully. So, you know, just things like that to keep in mind, whereas something like this that has kind of a watery look would probably look better with the silver, even though it would go with the gold too, but you know, you just have to think that part through as you're making your jewelry. So I'm going to kind of clear my work area a little bit and um, also photo paper is a fantastic this is old photo paper that I had this is a fantastic thing to put your uh, leftover pores on if you have like a little bit left in your cups and that kind of thing because it sticks to this like nobody's business and it makes a great surface to add to your jewelry making so I use this often if I have extra photos. You can even use old photos that are faded or no good. You know, like landscape scenes that didn't come out, like bad photos. You can use those all day long to put your paint on. I'm ready to start. And um, I've set aside all my things that I've picked. I've cut them out. I'm counting here. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I have ten bookmarks. And I should have ten of the smaller round cabochons. So that's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So the first thing you do, I keep a paper towel with alcohol on it. My table is clean, it's just stained with paint. But basically I'm just going to quickly wipe down these cabochons with alcohol so that there's no oily residue or anything from fingers or, or whatever. And the great thing about alcohol is it will evaporate so it doesn't stay wet for long, which is a good thing. So these are bookmarks and this is from maybe Etsy or somewhere like that that I got them. The company that I typically use is called Lily D's and that's L-I-L-L-Y D apostrophe S dot com. They usually sell sets or tr you know so that you have everything you need. You don't have to order things separately. Two, four, six, eight, ten. And then there's ten of the large ones. I'm going to go ahead and clean those while I'm doing this. And actually, after I clean them, I'm going to put the, uh, the flat side face up because they're domed, so they're rounded at the top. And that, so you want to keep the flat side face up so where it has a chance to air dry and be nice and clean for when you glue it onto your skins. And so my skins are either on plastic or photo paper or butcher paper or cardstock. They're on different things. It's so much easier to do it this way on where the paint skins are on something as opposed to just a paint skin because paint skins are very, very, very thin and if you are trying to glue it against a paint skin that can get kind of tricky. So I prefer to have the paint skin poured onto something that I can just cut the shape out of paper or photo paper or whatever plastic 
um, that it might be on I also have a damp paper towel to the side here for my hands because sometimes your hands will get um, messy from glue. And I have, see here's a, a skin that I laid some uh, glass cabochons on top of, and they'll start sticking just to the skin. So you've got to kind of keep, if you just got skin, you've got to kind of keep it separated until you actually glue it. My fingers are clean. So I'm putting like a a drop about that size. You flip it over and you firmly press it down where you want it to be and you kind of wiggle it just a hair until it stops moving and then once it stops moving it is set but you want to make sure that you push that down very firmly that you don't see any bubbles underneath the glass There's one. But it, the key is to try not to touch the glue. Again, there's a drop. So have, have ready in your mind where you want that piece to be because once it you push it down and wiggle it a little bit, it's not going to move after that. But when you press it down and make sure there's no bubbles, that will squeeze out any air or anything between the glass cabochon and the, paint and the skin. So I see this is a piece of uh, photo paper or some kind of paper that I had poured my leftover paint on. So they're pieces of some kind of paper. See, so if you can't remember where you planned on putting it, then get it in squared away in your head so you'll know where to lay it down on the paint before you do it so you're not trying to move the piece of glass around so much. And if you get a lot of excess glue, like I put too much glue there, I'm wiping it away with that alcohol paper towel. So put a little bit less on the next one if you know that you're putting too much. And what's going to happen is when it dries, it's going to dry totally clear. And you'll see on your skin where it's shiny or where the glue dries. So I'm just finding where I want to place it. But you don't want any bubbles in this glue either. And what happens when you get that set on the skin, it's like almost putting a magnifying glass over the area that you um, are choosing. And it magnifies that for you. So press it down and wiggle it until it kind of stops moving. So if you get yourself prepared, then you can kind of go a lot faster than if you do it bit by bit.
And also, if you get any glue on the glass, you can use alcohol or uh, fingernail polish remover to get the glue off of the glass. Like this is just a skin. So it's very, very thin. Let's see what it does. It kind of magnifies the details that you place it on. So this is the next group of bookmarks and this is a little bit bigger. So because it's bigger it has a little bit more give and I'm just going to keep wiggling it around and I got a little too much glue which is fine. I just keep pushing down to make sure there's no air bubbles. So what happens is after this dries, I'm going to come back and cut around this piece of glass. So um, I just don't want a ton of glue on the outside of the glass, on the edges, but it's okay to have some. Here's another skin that's super thin. If you have a bubble, make sure and pop it before you lay the cabochon down on the glass, on the uh, skin. If you get too little glue, the glue's not going to go all the way to the edges and then moisture and so forth is going to seep in around the edges. So you want to get enough glue, but not so much to where it's in a puddle of glue and not too little where it doesn't cut, go all the way to the edges. And I tried to pick a variety of colors so that I'm not just, you know, going with one color thing. I like to have a variety. And like I said, most of the stuff I get from Lily D's, and Lily D's has a tutorial, like a written tutorial, and it also tells you how to make this with uh, copy paper instead of skins. You can use copy paper, but then there's a way you have to seal the copy paper before you glue the glass cabochon on top of it and all. So this, this is just a variation of putting it on acrylic skins. It doesn't mention in their tutorial about putting it on acrylic skins. I just adopted the version you just don't have to seal the acrylic skins like you do the paper because paper, you know, if, if paper gets wet, it, you know, it's going to run, the ink is going to run and things like that. You don't have that situation with this, the uh, acrylic skins. The tutorial, you have to just kind of read through it and kind of pick what you need to learn from it and then you kind of adapt it to do your acrylic skins with, but that's basically how I learned was just by reading their tutorial. So I've got four bookmarks left and then I can go on to the rest of the jewelry. See, some of these I did on uh, butcher paper, some on plastic, some on sheet protector, some on photo paper or old photos, some on old cards like Christmas cards and things. So I literally put my extra paint on anything that I can find pretty much. So once I have this done, Clean the top of my glue off while I'm talking. 
like once I have this done I can come and you know go maybe about a quarter of an inch up to it if I need to and trim away some you don't have to do that you know like some of these I had a lot, I like were a lot bigger pieces so I can cut off some of that extra paper but you don't have to do that with your stuff the first ten that I did were the smaller cabochons this is what you have to do to prepare what you're going to put your skin with the cabochon which is the glass dome they're called cabochons you have to prepare the tray that you're going to set it in with Lily D so I don't know about other glues but this is the way they recommend so then you go and you put a drop in each of the trays no more than really what you put on the glass cabochon and you have a little paintbrush and you just spread it around take it up on all the edges of the tray which will you know be the side areas where the glass is going to set in so you're basically just coating the inside of the tray with the glue and it doesn't take super long for this to dry it takes longer for the glue to dry against the acrylic skin because you want that nice and dry before you set it into your trays this will dry all the way and that's what you want it to do and what's going to happen is when you glue your skin into the tray you'll put another layer of glue and it will bond the the layer of glue that's in the tray the glue that you just put in and the glue and the piece that you're sitting you're setting into the tray it'll all become one solid piece and there won't be any chance of moisture getting in or air bubbles or anything like that so here's one if I can do it up close for you I'm just going around and spreading the glue and I'm doing it around all the edges of the inside of that tray and it doesn't have to be perfect or anything like that because what will happen is as it dries it will level itself out but this is just a layer of glue that's going to dry in the tray and then you'll take after this dries we'll take it and we'll cut around the glass and we'll peel off the back whatever it might be and if it's like photo paper that won't come off because the photo paper stays tight to the glue but other kinds of paper like butcher paper or plastic it'll peel off and it'll just leave the skin but then you're going to set this down with a new layer of glue into the tray and it will bond tremendously so we'll go by on that step later on I just wanted to show you up close so um, I have water that I'm just going to make sure and rinse my brush because you cannot leave your paintbrush or anything sitting around with the glue on it because obviously it's going to harden up right away. So I'm going to set these aside to dry. So this, this video is going to be a two-part video. I'm going to glue all the pieces in in front of you let them dry at, at least five to ten hours sometimes overnight then I'll come back and do the final part with you now I'm going to take these bookmarks I've got ten of them and I'm going to do the exact thing, same thing I'm just going to put glue in the trays and let it totally dry these are such cute little bookmarks they are just so precious so a, a dot of glue in each tray
and you don't want to overdo it. You want just enough to cover the bottom and the edges of the tray. Just basically think of it as you are sealing the metal with your glue. Everywhere where that paint or the acrylic skins or the glue is going to set in, it's all going to be sealed in with a dry layer of glue that just gives it a firmer bond when you glue in the final piece. It sounds like a lot, but it's really super simple. Like I said, it will level itself out so you don't have to do, you notice I'm doing it kind of quickly, it will do its own leveling out. So there's that tin. I'm rinsing my brush to get the glue off because the glue is water-based. That's the great thing about it. And you want to make sure you got everything laying in a flat place. Now it gets a little trickier when you do jewelry. The, um, the pendant part is not tricky, but when you have something that's round and it wants to roll around and, and you can't lay it flat, this is where you have to get a little creative. So what I do is I take a meat tray and I turn it upside down. So I take a razor knife or something like that. And I just cut some slits. I don't know how many I'm gonna need. I'm just cutting several slits. Though. I know I have a pair of earrings. I even do it on the sides sometimes. But you have to you have to put your ring, say your you know ring that you're gonna. Like I'll go ahead and I'm gonna do these metal pieces right now. Same difference, same thing you did like with the bookmark. You put your dot of glue in both pieces. Put my brush in the water and then I got to make the opening larger. Then you push it down in your meat tray there and make sure it's level. So there it is sitting in the meat tray. Now the, the necklace piece I can lay just flat on the table. I don't have an issue with it being flat. It lays flat. Let me move this back out of the way. I'm cleaning my glass with the alcohol. These are like adjustable rings. So they're not a certain size. They just squeeze. You just push them and they squeeze in. So that, you know, if you've got whoever buys it from you, no matter what size, they'll be able to wear the ring because it's not a certain size. So these are just adjustable rings. And I tell people these are handmade jewelry, so they have to treat it as if they're handmade. It's not fine jewelry, so they cannot use jewelry cleaner with it. The only thing they would possibly ever clean it with would be uh, just a slight kind of damp paper towel or something like that, but no jewelry cleaner. This would be strictly um, treating it as if it's handmade. Because I'm doing so many pieces, I'm going to like lay the jewelry as close to what I've painted as possible so I can keep track of what I wanted with which piece of jewelry because otherwise it's hard to keep track of it. I'm going to wash my hands because 
you do sometimes get a build up on your fingers. So this is a ring and a necklace only. And I tried to pick out the ones that had good cells for the turtles to where it would look, you know, like a turtle shell. So, you know, just trying to remember what the area I had picked and while that's while the alcohol is drying, then I've got two other pieces. I've got quite a bit here to do, so I'm just trying to keep moving. And like, also, you know, you want your, um, if you're doing a ring and a necklace, you want them to feel similar. You know, you don't want to pick two different areas of your painted skins and them not be cohesive. So you want some of the same colors. It doesn't have to be all the same shapes, but you want the same kind of feeling of color so that they feel like a matching set. Just, you know, common sense pretty much. And sometimes I'll put them really close, but you've got to leave just a little bit of a gap to be able to get through with some scissors or a razor. So don't get them too close on top of each other. So if you stick your fingers in the glue for any reason, it's easier to go ahead and you know, wipe it, the glue off the glass now as opposed to after it dries. Because it's kind of, it's, you know, it's water-based, but it's almost like an epoxy. Okay, so here is, I actually just made this skin yesterday when I did my gold metallic pour. And um, so now I'm going to make jewelry with it. Because I just loved the colors of the metallic gold with the uh, the little bit of that peacock pearl that were Deco Art paints. So I've got a cuff bracelet and a pendant and a ring. I mean, remember how I had planned on doing this? And when you set when you set down a piece of glass on a straight out acrylic skin. It likes to stick to it, so you kind of have to know what you're going to do with it, kind of right away, because you don't have a lot of leeway as far as time goes. So I definitely want my larger pieces to be pretty cohesive looking together. And then the ring just needs to feel a little bit similar. The shimmery paint that has any kind of a metallic in it or glitter really really is pretty when you put a glass cabochon on it it magnifies it it's like putting a magnifying glass to it so it really kind of pulls out that sparkle so this was literally on plastic that's almost like saran wrap it's really thin So it's a lot harder to do it straight on like skins. So I'm going to figure out how I'm going to get my cuff bracelet in here. So like this I'm putting the cuff bracelet in the uh, styrofoam first and getting it level and then I'm going to put the glue in because I needed to use some force there. And that's it's pretty smart to do with all of it actually is before you put the glue in, go ahead and put the pieces in. So this set, some glue. I got a little too much glue on this one, so while I've got the glue, I'm going to go ahead and put, put it in this one. So when it's a bigger piece, you have a lot more movement when you're pushing it down on your skins because you've got um, a larger space with you know, the glue. 
you've got a little bit more wiggle room but you don't want to move it too much because you don't want to chance pulling up that paint for any reason with the glue that you've got attached to the glass. So these are just individuals here and they're all flat so I don't have to use the uh, meat tray for any of these. Basically I'm going to dump all the glass pieces out and the only reason the glass pieces are in there is just to keep up with to make sure I had a piece for every piece of jewelry. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and clean, cover my glue back up for now, get some alcohol and clean the flat sides of my cabochons so that they'll be totally dry by the time I'm ready to glue them. And this one is um, kind of like a rectangle with curved ends. And one side is flatter than the other, so you have to pay attention on that one because it almost looks identical on both sides. And it should sound squeaky clean, just like when you're cleaning windows and they squeak, then you know, then you know you got it clean. I go on to little of the blues and the greens there. And this is the fun part right here is when you glue it down and then you see your your skin kind of magnified the acrylic skin that you're putting it on that's the really neat part about it it's kind of fun to watch and see what it what appears but anyway it's always better to have too a little too much glue than not enough that's key is to make sure that you have enough glue. But I tried to get some variations of colors here because not everybody has the same taste. Some like, you know, the pastels, some like it really bold and colorful, you know, some like it in between. And some of these still I have pieces left that I can still even use again, so some pieces I save and some I don't. So the bubble, so I'm popping it there. So I've got this spring festival I'm doing Saturday and um, I've got 120 paintings or something like that, outrageous, I don't know. I've got probably more than I need. I know it's more than I'll sell. But um, you don't want to go with too little. It's a lot to haul, though. We're taking our, we have a camping trailer that's 27 feet long. And um, so we're going to take the trailer and the pickup truck and my car because uh, we've got the dog that's going to be with us and we need the space. But I thought, you know, the jewelry is, you know, smaller items that, you know, that pretty much anybody can afford. So that's why I wanted to have some pretty pieces. And um, once you set the jewelry, the cabochon with the, the acrylic skin into the tray with the glue and set it, it's, it's not going anywhere. It's not going to pop out. It, it really bonds very, very quickly. So, once these are dry on the acrylic skins and I put them into the, glue them into the trays, they are good to go immediately. That's the great part about them. I'm going to put all the glue into the trays. There's five there. And I forget how I figured out pricing. I have a set price, which is earrings, ring, and a necklace, and then individual price. And there's no difference. You don't get a, an extra good rate for purchasing a whole set because 
all of them aren't going to have sets. Like some of these are just going to be necklaces. So I have a necklace price and a bracelet price and an earrings price and a ring price because you know they might may not want a whole set. And um, so nothing. I think that the cuff bracelet is twenty, and then it goes down from there. It's not. I'm not, I'm not making them really pricey. I want them affordable. Like I want to say the ring is ten dollars or less. And um, that way, you know, it's affordable. So I'm gonna scoot these over, and I'm trying. Like I said, I'm trying to keep them paired together so I don't forget what I plan to go and what because when you're doing mass quantities like this at one time it can get kind of confusing. I can't wait to see all these done. It'll be exciting. Okay, so now I've got four or five, five sets left. And I'm looking at this tray and the glass cabochon. I may not have the right size. Okay, that's the right one. I'm going to panic there for a minute. Yeah, I think I was going to do a ring, and I, sometimes I forget because I've got so many. So, like I said, put it doesn't have to be a perfect layer because it'll level out, but make sure to get everything covered that's the metal and um, make sure the walls of the tray of the ring or the necklace or whatever are covered as well. Get down to the home stretch. Three sets left. Okay, we made it through. Uh, I didn't take as long as I thought it would, but um, I'm sure it took forever to you after just watching. But I'm going to let things dry, and then I will come back with the video of cutting everything out and gluing it in, which is a lot more fun. Thank you.
So I've cut all the glass cabochons out and I've got three left and I wanted to show you what I was doing on the reverse side of it. So I'm going to cut around the edge and you don't want to go under the glass at all or it will pull the skin away from the glass. So you want to stay parallel with the edge of the glass. So this one had probably butcher paper. So you very gently catch the very edge of the butcher paper and that peels off. And so what you're left with here is the actual layer of uh, acrylic skin. And that's why I'm leaving them on the table. When I lay them down, I lay them face up so they can totally air dry overnight. This one had butcher paper on it. So I'm pulling that piece of paper away and there's the paint skin on that side. Here's what it looks like on this side but here's the back side of it. So I'm going to leave that face up so it can dry as well. Some people use like a exacto knife or a razor. I don't have as much control that way so I choose to use the scissors and I don't. I've tried smaller scissors and I do better with larger scissors because you can control that blade against the edge of the glass and you don't go in too far. And sometimes if I just don't get the edge just up to it just close enough then I can come back and trim. You don't want to see any sticking out but you don't want to um, cut under under the edge of the glass because if you cut under the edge you're going to remove that acrylic skin. So here's one that was done on some kind of like a plastic sheet protector or something. So that peels right off and that leaves the paint side exposed. And here's my last one. This one was, I can tell, I did it on a, the back of a, on a piece of card, like a um, greeting card. So anything paper like that is not going to peel off because it, there's not a shiny side. It was like a dull card. So I'm going to leave that on because I can't remove it. If I peel this, it'll take the paint right off the glass. So this one stays on. But... There's the um, the painted side, you know, which is magnified by the cabochon, and it this one had some. Uh, this was like the glitter paints, or not glitter, but you know, it was metallic, so it has that shimmer, which is really, really pretty. So. I have some pieces that have, I think what I used was kind of like um, dry erase poster board. So it's kind of a thick plastic. And I'm going to let this totally dry overnight. And I might try to peel it off tomorrow. But if it doesn't come, then I'm just going to leave it off. I mean, I'm going to leave it on there and not peel it off. So I'll try it tomorrow. And excuse my dirty fingernails I've been into paint and black paint and white paint and my hands are dry and covered with all kinds of colors of paint so anyway I'm done cutting everything out 
and the next video, part of the video will be me gluing in everything into the final pieces. And I'm going to very quickly take each piece of jewelry or bookmark or whatever I'm using and put one more layer of thin glue I was reviewing the tutorial and it sounds like you just can't you can't be safe enough on sealing this so I'm going to um, just go one more round on all the glue even if it's just a very thin coat just to be extra sure I'm going to put such a thin layer I'm not even going to put these rings back in the on the foam tray I'm just putting another light coat I'm trying to do this as quickly as possible it only takes about 15 minutes for it to dry and while these are drying, I can be doing the rest of what I need to do to get everything prepared. The right things with the right pieces. And then I'm still going to put one more coat of glue on the glass cabochon before I put it into the tray. So like I said, this part is nice and fast because we already have one layer of glue in these trays. So this, this part goes even quicker. They emphasize on the tutorial that you, you know, you coat multiple times. And in the past, I've only done one coat in the tray and one coat on the glass cabochon. So this time I'm doing an extra coat which I typically did not do before so maybe that will just help even more so with it being nice and secure with its setting. Make sure to go around the walls of your tray on the rings and the pendants. too much there so I'm just transferring it over to the other piece and this glue does kind of stick to your fingers it's water-based but it doesn't clean up off your hands very well so I, I try to get as little as possible on my fingers if I can avoid it just because it sticks to your fingers like crazy so sometimes it it takes alcohol sometimes it takes I don't know about y'all but I have to go through every so often and clean out my spare bedroom that has art supplies I mean boxes from the art supplies I have so many boxes I have to cut them down and take them to the recycle place and all that stuff it's so much faster putting this second coat in it's it's nice it's not so time consuming you just want a thin layer but you just want to get all those edges and I know I'm repeating myself over and over again and y'all are probably like okay you've told us all the bookmarks 20 of them to be exact I'm just putting a little a little drip in each tray. I call them trays because you're basically they're different shapes for rings and pendants and bracelets and everything else, but it's basically set up like a tray. There's a flat surface, but it has raised edges and that holds your glass cabochon into place that holds the glue so that's why we call it trays now different people make different kinds of jewelry and some make theirs with resin 
I, I would never use resin on jewelry unless I totally created the jewelry with resin and nothing else in some kind of a form or mold because um, I just do not care for working with resin. It is just, I don't like the, the possibility of some kind of a chemical health hazard. It's sticky and tacky and it is gorgeous on painted pieces. I, I mean, I have to agree, it is the absolute best looking way that you can ever display your art, but it is time consuming. You have to have the right conditions to do it in. You have to have a dust free area. Um, and unless you have the right conditions, it just doesn't lean itself towards you doing it in your home in an area that you live in like I do where it's in my kitchen and living room area that, you know, I don't want to breathe toxic things and that kind of stuff. So right now I just don't have the space for resin. So I'm going to give these a few minutes to dry and I'll be back to glue in the cabochons, which is the exciting part. Woohoo! My batter came! Sandra Lett, acrylic artist. This is for my festival on Saturday. So, I'm happy this came. I was afraid it wasn't going to get here in time. And my little easels came. So, the easel I think these are 8 inch easels from Oriental Trading Company and really just about perfect for the 12 inch canvases. So that worked out perfectly. These were about $5 a piece but you can see they're very solid um, construction. I'm really surprised at the quality. I have some little tiny ones that I got from another company that were six inches, so two inches smaller, and they're just like made out of chopstick wood. They're like really small and fragile. These are nice and sturdy, so I'm happy about these too. Okay, so I'm ready to get down to some gluing. I'm gonna start with these pieces here. And I need to make sure I have a wet paper towel. When it comes to paper towels, I don't scrimp either. I use Viva because you can you can wet them and wring them out just like a washcloth and they don't tear apart. And every all the other brands, maybe maybe Brawny, Brawny doesn't do that or Bounty. Brawn and Bounty, they don't they're not as bad. To me Viva is the best. So that's what I use. But um okay, so here we're we've got a cabochon, putting the glue on it, going to set it in here and press firmly and if you have any glue that squeezes out you need to wipe it away immediately and you just press for a few minutes and hold it firmly for not a few minutes you just press for a few seconds but you gotta press long enough to make sure that you're squeezing out all the glue and if you don't have any glue squeezing out then you might be a little short on the glue you kinda do wanna see just a just a hint of glue coming out then you know that you've got plenty of glue and then you can also when it it's thoroughly dry you can go back and clean up the glass with alcohol or fingernail polish remover just to make sure you have all the residue off but that is set in and it's good to go you can also put it inside the tray as well which I'm gonna do to me that's just a little bit easier to do Just press firmly. Wipe away anything on the edges. 
So this was the one pendant that I had that I don't have a necklace or a chain for. So if I get a chance to go to the store before the festival, I'll run out and get a antique brass chain. But I want you to see, I don't know if you, I'm trying to get the camera where I can see what I'm looking at. There's the ring. And these were from the metallic pour I did the other day. So it's all metallics, but the shimmer is just beautiful. So those are fantastic. I love them. So we're going to keep on moving here. The other thing is if you have any air bubbles or if you didn't get a really, really tight seal, you'll have um, kind of like a silver speckled look which is what I'm getting with this piece, so I may have just totally ruined this piece because I pulled, I pulled the plastic away and the plastic did not want to come. So, I, may, I ruined that one. This is the ring. I'm going to put my glue in the tray. And make sure you set it in there nice and firm. Wipe away any excess. Press nice and hard. But if you were to see any little glassy or silver, silver looking little speckles on the, the bottom of your design, then that means you've got some air bubbles in there. So that's why the glue part is so important. So I've got a purple ring, I just don't have the, the pendant to go with it. This one was photo paper. I can tell from the, the uh, back of it, it was photo paper. That will not peel off. Photo paper sticks to your paint like glue and you cannot get it off to save your life. So I'm not even trying. Anything paper related, unless it's like super slick, it's not going to peel off. So photo paper works great because you can put your acrylic skin on there. The photo paper actually has some, uh, it doesn't bend when you're you know, dripping your acrylic skins on there. So it's great for acrylic pores. And there's that. This is the fun part. This is photo paper, so it's not coming off. This was one pendant tray that I got, I think, at a craft store. So it's kind of like a pewter look. It's a little different from the rest of my silver ones and actually I was thinking about it the chain the chain is antiqued but it's not super flashy I've got some that are straight out sterling silver and some that are antiqued so the antiqued one still works with this that one has some shimmer too it, it was metallics I think this was a, a pour I did a, a, quite a while back, but um, and it may not have been a pour on a canvas. It may have just been a pour that I did. Now this looks like plastic. I don't want to, and it's not coming off either. So I'm going to. Give this a good coat of paint. I'm actually going to spread this one around a little bit. And press really firmly. I 
oh, another thing too on the on the round ones or square. If you have a, a particular orientation that you want your pendant to be, make sure to put it in your like this has you know the thing at the top, and so I didn't even pay attention to, to the way that I put it in the tray, but it, it looks fine. It the the di it's on a diagonal, the design is, so it would have worked in, in any in direction. So just keep that in mind when you're putting your things together. If there is an orientation how you want, you know, that design to be on your piece. This is the exciting part. So really press firmly. This one had glitter in the paint. Don't know if you can see the sparkles. So that's really pretty. Okay, these these two I had peeled off straight down to the acrylic skin so they don't have paper or anything on them. I think this might have plastic on it. But it's not it's not coming up, so I'm not gonna push my luck. And this glue does look a little milky coming out, but it does dry clear, so you don't need to worry about if you know if it were to have, like these square glass cabochons, there is a tiny little gap inside the tray. It, it doesn't come all the way to the edge, so you know if the glue doesn't. You know, if it squeezes out a little bit or whatever, that's fine because it dries clear and you're not going to be able to see it. Some of the cabochons like barely just fit right in and some have a gap. So you just have to, you just need to make sure that you're putting it in there as tight as it will go and you're squeezing as tight as you can to get that glue spread out and covered in every bit of that underneath your glass cabochon so that you don't have any air to get in for air bubbles or moisture or anything like that. So this is, and see, once I glue these, they're not coming out. I could, I could go and wear this jewelry right now. This plastic does not want to come up, so I'm not going to, I really thought, because if you pour on this plastic, you can peel it off, but I really thought it would um, come up, but it is not coming up. Photo paper, I can see the HP on it, so this is one of the cute little turtles. I just love these turtle necklaces, they're so adorable. So I'm pressing really firmly. And even if you don't see any glue, go back and wipe it anyway, just to make sure. So this is where you can take your cells to play up your advantage with the turtle. You know, that looks like a turtle shell. This one I just picked the rainbow colors because I liked it. Another 
turtle. This one's green this time. The turtle has a matching ring. I would imagine this would not be fun to do if you have arthritis because you've really got to apply a good amount of pressure. Isn't that really cute? Got the green with the little cells. Here's a pink one. I did one kind of out of the norm and this was pink and it was, uh, this one has sparkles in it. It was like a pearlescent paint. I remember doing that one. That was for my spring bouquet painting. So, it's not glitter, but it's pearlescent looking. So, I don't know if you can see the shimmer from the pearlescent paint. Did that tray out of the way because that goes with the purple one that I messed up. This is photo paper, so I'm gluing it. I, definitely on the nautical, the anchor ones, I try to do um, usually in the blue family, you know, something watery looking or I know I did one. Where is it? Yeah, I did a red, a red and blue one that looks kind of like patriotic, I guess you would say. So this one is red and blue. This one didn't have the cells that looked like a turtle, but it had what I felt like was ninja turtle colors, which is white and green and a little bit of deep purple. So I thought, hey, a ninja turtle. You never know. You never know what's going to appeal to people colors wise either. This one has a ring to match. So see what I mean by kind of ninja turtle? So this one was strictly a pendant and earrings. And they're straight down to the paint. And this had uh, metallics in it. It was purple and silver and black. So I thought, oh, this is pretty. Sure, I'll get enough glue in here. Okay, it wasn't going into the tray, and it's like, oh, I gotta make sure it goes in all the way, or it won't seal tightly. You can't have a any kind of a gap. And this is the only pair of earrings that I had. Well, I had I had other earrings. I just didn't have the glass pieces for them. They were kind of a hard size to find and I don't know, know why I didn't get the glass cabochons with them. And these have a little bit of a linear kind of look to them so I'm making sure that I put them both in a linear way like straight up and down and not not crosswise. So they have a a little shimmer to them. Some black and silver and purple. Really pretty. One, it's a turtle and it's got copper and purple and turquoise. So I don't know if you can see the the shimmer of the copper that has the purple and turquoise. Okay, this was paper. I can tell from the, the feel of it that it was like done on probably a card. 
So I definitely know that the paper will not come off. So I'm going to make sure I have a little bit of extra glue. Making sure I get all the edges. So that's green and blue. But it's like the glass is like a magnifying glass and um, it really makes those colors pop. It's kind of like putting resin on one of your paintings. So um, it has the feel of resin, but it's, it's glass. So glass is so much easier to work with on jewelry, in my opinion. I just cannot imagine doing resin with jewelry. I would, I would have the resin all over the metal, all over my hands. There's just no way I could do resin jewelry. I know that there's probably some methods that you can do some gorgeous jewelry and uh, where you pour it in molds and that kind of thing and you can make it just fabulous and I, I probably will try that one day. So these are all just some turtle pendants. I don't know if you can see, this is where the glue has squeezed out from under the, so you can kind of get an idea of what it looks for, but that's what it looks like when the glue squeezes out. So you're just getting it all before it has a chance to even dry. And then you don't have as much of a cleanup issue. If you wait, it's going to be dried to your glass and you'll never get it off. And you don't want it drying on your uh, metal part of your jewelry either. This one's a pale one. It's pink and like a pale aqua. It's really pretty. See the pale pink and like a mint color. And then this is the blues and greens. Okay, so I got the jewelry part done. Now I've got my, all my bookmarks to do. I'm going to wash my brush and hands, get a clean paper towel. I'll be right back. Okay, so these are the larger bookmarks and there's one here that has a piece of paper can tell it's butcher paper and see on the butcher paper it peels right off and it leaves that skin underneath that's that's the butcher paper that I use right here it's fabulous for skins so I'm gonna put me a, a dot of glue in each of the bookmarks that wiped off right away and I press several times. I don't just press once and then stop. I make sure that I have pressed as hard as I can firmly for a few seconds to make sure any excess glue is squeezed out. First I was trying to find one, you know, pores that looked antique -y. And then I thought, you know, I'm just going to put different colors because, you know, different colors appeal to people. And, you know, some people like orange and pink and, you know, more vibrant colors. And that's an orange one. And it still looks pretty with the antique brass. There's one from my metallic painting the other day. It's got some copper and gold and black, so it's really pretty. My thumbs are going to be sore from all this squeezing from last night and this, today. Purple is really pretty too with this antique brass. Getting ready to squeeze it on here when I already have it in the tray. I'm going to go ahead and 
plop these in really fast before this glue starts setting up. I probably shouldn't have done 10 at one time. Oh, that's pretty. That's a purple one. That's purple and periwinkle and it, it kind of glows. This one looks like a snake eye. This one was more contemporary. It had kind of some blobs of different colors with some metallic. So it, it's kind of cool too. And I'll show you these. I'm as excited about the jewelry as I am my paintings. See, here's... Sorry, I keep banging the table and I'm sorry about that. This one is purple and metallic. I've got some, I've got some glue on the glass there. And you can scrape, once the glue is dry, this was probably from last night when I was originally putting the glue on. If it's on the glass, you can scrape it off with your fingernail. I wouldn't use anything sharp that would scratch the glass. So there's that one. Here's the shimmery, metallic, copper, and gold, and black. There's a turquoise one. And see, that one is purple, the little white and blue, and it looks like a light bulb was turned on inside. It glows. It's so pretty. Woo! <laughs> so here's the one that I think looks like a snake eye. It's green and it has a slice of red and a little bit of orange down the center. Here's the one that looks kind of contemporary. It's metallic gold and purple and some green and blue and a little bit of white. And it was from a drip from I think one of my peacock paintings where I use peacock colors. I'm not sure but it's really pretty. So these are the smaller these have the glass cabochons. They're a little bit smaller that came from Etsy or one of those shops. I did not get these from Lil Lily D's. So I'm just looking to see. This is all down to the actual paint. That's photo paper. These are down to the paint. That's down to the paint. This is, that feels like a card. It's like paper. That's down to the paint. And that's photo paper. So, I'm going to put my dot of glue. I'm in a little bit on these, maybe the last one, so you can see. I got a little bit much in that one, but hopefully. I can spread it out. So there's like that now there's at least three coats of paint between putting it in the tray last night. I put another coat before I got started and then this last cut before you put the uh, cabochon into the tray. This one looks like an eye of a bird or something. It's kind of interesting. That one's pretty. It's soft and feminine looking. This one is beautiful. It's black and metallic gold. Sometimes you just don't know how things are going to look until you get it glued to the glass and in the setting. It's kind of hard to sometimes envision what a piece is going to look like until you actually get it into the glass and then it's like, wow, that looks really pretty. So now looking at these, I can hopefully go back and remember some of the skins that I used. And remember how, how it looked so pretty. So 
So I want to say I was going to sell these for I think $12. And I think that's a fair price because they're handmade and they're made out of some kind of a antique brass. See, I've not used Etsy enough to know. I, I don't know if you can go back into your history and pull up orders that you've placed on Etsy in the different shops because they're all, you know, individually owned. I know I bought, you know, some 18-inch uh, MDF boards uh, from a woodworker person. Um, and I bought a bag of glass cabochons, which I have a ton of extra ones that are a certain size. I don't remember what size they were. But, um, like I said, I don't remember where I ordered these from. I'm, I think it was on Etsy. So I'd like to be able to find them again to order more because I totally took everything that I had in my inventory that I could make stuff for this festival and um, so now I've got to replenish what I'm using up and this stuff is not it's not expensive at all it's very uh, reasonable you would be surprised at how reasonable it is this one I see some glue around the edges so I'm just trying to get it with my fingernail before it sets up. Because believe me, if, if there's a glue there, you'll see it. Because it will dry, it dries clear, but it, um, if you're wiping around, it'll kind of, you know, Kind of ball up almost like rubber cement but not you know not as easy as rubber cement would but um, you can kind of get around it with the edge and your fingernail to make sure all your edges are nice and smooth and clean and I'll go I'll, after these sit for a while I'll go back in and kind of clean them up with some alcohol or uh, nail polish remover just to make the glass nice and shiny. The alcohol will probably do the trick. But I'm not going to use like a window cleaner or anything like that. So there those are. So let's see if I can zoom in. Aren't those pretty? These two have metallics. The black and gold is really stunning. This one had metallic gold. Let me get it to where it's not. See if it will focus in. It looked like a funny little bird face or something to me. I don't know. It looked like crazy eyes. Reminds me of a Muppet character or something. This one was some kind of a pearlescent or copper or something, but it's combined with a, a rosy color and a little bit of a pale aqua. So it's really pretty and feminine. And then like these, this one has my peacock colors. So it's got a little bit of um, 
purples and I think it's when I did my peacock swipe so it's all metallics but it's really beautiful and this is just um, kind of peacock colors but it doesn't have any metallics in it I've got so many lights in here that it may be blocking you from seeing the images. And then there's, here's the two bright ones. Let it come into focus some. zoom out and so here's 20 bookmarks all the necklaces I have two keychains so what I'll do is um, There was those three. There, I think that's all my anchors. So one will become a necklace, and one will be on a keychain. So I have to decide. I think I'm a. I think I'm gonna use this one as the necklace because it has red in it, and I think these two will become keychains. So I'll get to just like these were from Lily D's, I'm pretty sure. So look how super easy that is. There's two keychains. And like this ring is all by itself, the purple one, but it, it's a very vivid purple. It's really pretty. And like I said, these are adjustable rings, so they pull apart and squeeze in. And I tell people, this is not fine jewelry. Don't use jewelry cleaner. You might can wash your glass off with alcohol or a little bit of soapy water you know on a cloth but nothing don't immerse your jewelry in anything is what you tell people so I've got a bunch of chains here and the other thing I was going to show you too is okay so this is one necklace here and this is a necklace here so I need two chains And I'll show you the difference. This actually has one of these little, the little circle things. Let me zoom back down. It has one of these, and it actually does not need that. So I'm taking it off. Actually, I want to use, yeah, I do want this one, I think. No, I'm going to use, the, there's, I got a couple of different styles of chains. This one has smaller smaller chain if I can find a pewter looking chain I'm gonna to try to find one but see how it goes through and 
and that's perfect for wearing it. And I don't get the long chains either. I get the shorter ones. I think these are 24 inches maybe. I'm going to measure. Yes, these are 24 inch chains. You can get different lengths. I just get 24 inches. That is plenty long. You know, I don't like super long necklaces. That's just my personal preference. Okay, where's the other one? Uh, the red one here. I'm going to use, this one has a bigger, a bigger chain. Let me find the opening to it. So the problem with this one is, if you put your chain through this one, the chain's going to be coming this way. It's going to be coming up. It's not going to the left and to the right like it should. So this is where they give you a bag of these little round O-rings or whatever you call them. And I've got to open one up. Make sure it's closed nice and tight. And on this one, so I've already opened the chain up. I could even let people pick their own chains. They're all so similar, I'm not even going to... You know, if somebody were, were standing at my booth and they said, I really like this other chain better, yeah, I'm going to switch it out for them, but I'm, I'm just not going to fool with that as an option up front. So, let's see. A little mark on my glass. So there, with the little O-ring on it, then it, it works that way, like it's supposed to. So, that is that. These are, these silver chains, I don't know if you can tell the difference. This is the sterling silver, which is the brightest silver that comes with the Lily D's. This is one that came from another brand. You can see there's a different coloration. This one has a little bit more of a yellow silver cast to it. So it specifically goes with... One, two, I had three just regular round, uh, these aren't, they aren't the turtle ones, they're just regular round pendants. And so these three chains go with these three. It's a, just a regular silver and these chains have a little bit different color so they match with these. I'm going to put those aside so I don't accidentally put those with the wrong one. But I'm just going to sit here and put my necklaces together. And I'll probably fast forward through this. If you want to watch, you can. So I'm making sure, too, that if I have a ring, which is antiqued, that the, mat, the necklace that goes with it has an antiqued chain. And the little turtle, these are not antiqued and these are. And the only difference you can tell is in the, the crevices of their little uh, fins or wings or you know whatever it is, the little flippers. They're antiqued right there, and that's how you can tell that it's antiqued.
I think I have all of them done. I have the one necklace that I don't have a brass necklace for, chain. I have to purchase one if I can get to Michael's or Hobby, Hobby Lobby. I'm done. I hope you fast forwarded through the boring parts. I hope it was something you learned from. I also bought bags at Michael's that I can give people their jewelry in. I've got little pretty plastic black bags to put their purchases in. And um, like I said, I got the, I have this metal stand that I'm going to put like bookmarks and things in. I've got this that has organization for the different sets. And I also have this which is kind of like a black velvet thing that I got that was kind of inexpensive but it shows every little piece of dust and fur and <laughs> everything else. Those will be what I display my stuff in. So if you liked it please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I appreciate it.